Hello, and welcome to another fabulous episode of the Killer Author Club. We are so excited to welcome Killer Zoya Stage to the club. Will she survive? Will we? We have tons to talk about, so grab your cocktail and your list of questions, and we will see you on the other side. Welcome to the Killer Author Club. Three best-selling authors talking about killer of the fictional kind with the best thriller and suspense authors in the business. Killer conversations, killer cocktails, and killer guests with your hosts, Kimberly Bell, Heather Gutenkopf, and Kara Ruda. This is the Killer Author Club. Hello to all our new members and to the Killer Author Club OGs on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube, wherever you're watching. And a very happy birthday to Jeff Summers. I know he's out there watching and we are celebrating with you tonight. Um, wherever you are, we are so excited to have you here. I'm Killer Kimberly Bell. I'm Killer Kara Ruda. And I'm Killer Heather Goodenkoff. And we are so excited to welcome Killer Zoya to the Killer Author Clubhouse. We'll be talking all about her book, Dear Hannah, in creepy in the best possible way. And like all, always, we've got tons of killer fun planned for you tonight. Speaking of fun, how about some fun in your inbox? We are launching our hot off the press newsletter next week, Killer Author Club newsletter. If you'd like to be the first to know about big plans we have coming up, and I do mean big plans, then sign up tonight at killerauthorclub.com. There's a um, banner at the very top of the page where you can drop your email. A reminder also to drop your questions in the comments. We will be scouring them to ask as many as we can of our killer guests during the show. In the meantime, Kara, would you do the honors? I'd be delighted. Okay, Zoya Stage's debut novel, Baby Teeth, was a USA Today and international bestseller and was nominated for a Bram Stoker Award. Her second mind-bending by the New York Times novel Wonderland was one of Book Riot's best horror books of 2020. Getaway, a stunning third triumph book list star review, was named by Lit Reactor as one of the best books of 2021. Her most recent novel, which is utterly harrowing and masterful, is Mothered. Dear Hannah, the standalone sequel to Baby Teeth, released on just this, yes, this week, right? Yeah. <laughs> and it's out now. And she lives in Pittsburgh with her cats. Congratulations and welcome. Oh, thank you so much. Yay. Okay, we're going to dive into the book in great detail in a minute. But for now, can you give us a brief elevator pitch about Dear Hannah? Sure. So Dear Hannah is a standalone sequel to Baby Teeth. And it is about a 20-something young sociopath who is trying to function normally in the world. And she finds a family to become her family and all is going wonderfully for her until her stepdaughter starts to change in ways that Hannah can't control. And then Hannah's solutions are a little questionable. <laughs> just, just a tad, but we love to follow it. Great book. We have lots of questions for you and don't forget to drop your questions, everybody who's listening. But first it's time to talk about this episode's special drink. Yes, so the killers, we love our cocktails and mocktails and tasty drinks. So every episode, we ask our killer guest to come equipped with their favorite. And the recipes for tonight's drink and all the killer cocktails that have come before are at killerauthorclub.com under the tab Killer Cocktails. Zoya chose watermelon agua fresca as her drink tonight. Mm -hmm. Oh, my God. Uh, looks so good. Tell us why. This is the perfect drink while reading Dear Hannah. And show us that drink again. I covered That's it. So oh, pretty. So pretty. <laughs> so it's almost a blood red. It's not so <laughs> and also for an August release, it's a nice refreshing melon drink. And rumor has it that you can do this same recipe with any kind of melon. But I haven't tried the other ones yet. Okay. Yes. That's so pretty. It is yummy. Perfect. Well, cheers and congratulations, Zoya, for another amazing read. Thank you so much. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Really good. Okay. Perfect color. <laughs> I know, right? 
Um, so the killers and I started the killer author club a couple years ago so that readers like you can interact with some of the best suspense and thriller authors in the business. Our summer fall lineup includes superstars like our very own killer Kara Ruda, Robert Dagoni, Geneva Rose, and so many more for dates, times, past episodes, etc. You can check out killerauthorclub.com. But tonight we're here to talk about Dear Hannah, Soya Stage's latest thriller. The most unsettling child you've ever read about is all grown up. You won't know what to believe, you won't know who to pull for, and you won't put it down until the last page is turned. That's a quote from Tony Wirt, best-selling author of Just Stay Away. And Nat Cassidy, author of Mary and Nestlings, said, oh, but this is a deliciously nasty piece of work. <laughs> what a quote. Dear Anna succeeds brilliantly on so many levels as an ingenious follow-up to Baby Teeth, as a standalone thriller, and is one of the best, most squirm-inducing portraits of a deviant schemer this side of Gone Girl. So, Soya, obviously you are a brilliant and devious killer, um, but we need to know what your answer to the killer question is. When do you kill? I kill in those magic rare moments where my writing is effortless, and actually enjoyable when it's not hard, when it's just going so well. And it's like, oh, this is what writing should always be. So that's when I kill. Have you figured out the magic button when that happens? It's like, do you know how to make that happen? No, I don't. And it's, of course, different for every book. So, yeah. yeah. But I love those moments. Yeah. Me that's such too. a, you're right, that word magic. It's like a magical moment when the, they just kind of flow from your brain to yeah. your fingertips. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. I think we, we authors all live for those moments, right? <laughs> They're what keeps us going. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. So for this book, I feel like we have to start with Hannah, your main character from Baby Teeth, which published what, six years ago? Yes. 2018. Yeah. So did you always plan to revisit Hannah? Because someone commented on one of our posts. I don't remember which one in the which group, but um, someone posted, oh, I thought she said that she would never do a follow-up to Baby Teeth. Did you yeah, change I, your mind? No, that is what I had said. I had said for years, honestly, that I would not do a follow-up. It was the question I was asked the most often if I would write a sequel. And I really felt like Baby Teeth was finished, that the story launched in its trajectory and I was happy with its trajectory and then I don't know exactly what happened during the pandemic like I was a vegetable on my couch watching a ton of true crime and like some of the episodes, I started wondering like oh what if what if that was mm -hmm. then I realized I'm like okay no Hannah's not any of those characters that just wouldn't be right it would be an interesting adaptation but it wouldn't be for Hannah and then it like suddenly dawned on me it's like oh I want to know who Hannah is like I know who she isn't she's not a character from a true crime show but who is she and then I really started thinking about it who she would be as an adult and what she would be doing and what her life would be like and then I got really excited about writing a follow-up and how did you come up with her job as a phlebotomist? <laughs> yes, yeah, so that's actually pretty funny because the very first thing I knew about her, like I kind of picked an age and then I'm like, what would she do for a living? And I'm like, she would be a phlebotomist. <laughs> I knew that before I knew about her relationship or having a stepdaughter or anything else. I knew Hannah is a phlebotomist. She would absolutely be somebody who would want to draw blood and be fascinated by that and maybe enjoy the opportunity to hurt people just a little bit when she felt like it. And can they do that? I mean, is that true? Like, did you do research into all this phlebotomist stuff? Like, can they actually purposefully miss a vein or push too hard? I don't I've had a lot of blood draws, like a lot. And I've gotten like serious injuries from blood draws. And on the flip side, I've had blood draws that were like so effortless and so painless and they were perfect. And so I don't know why Sometimes it goes so well and sometimes it doesn't. So 
I just imagine for Hannah that she can do a very good blood draw when she wants to, but maybe <laughs> sometimes she doesn't want to. Okay, got it. It's so creepy. <laughs> and, you know, as we get to know 24-year-old 20, Hannah, uh, you know, I felt some sympathy for her, but I also was, like, terrified of her as well. Because, <laughs> you know, she really she really gave her marriage and being a stepmom, you know, the good old try, you know. And um, But when things start to go south a little bit, um, she got a little scary. So was that your intention with her? And how did you accomplish that? It was kind of, you know, slowly eased into it. Yeah, um, I mean, I very much wanted to try to write a realistic portrayal of how a sociopath functions in the world. Because, of course, there are sociopaths, and it's not a synonym for being a serial killer or anything like that. It just sociopaths don't function on emotions the way we do. They don't have empathy the way everybody else does. So their path through life tends to be some sort of game of some sort that they devise for themselves. And, you know, Hannah originally, her original game was she wanted a nice, stable place to live at the same sort of level of where she had grown up. And that, you know, it starts out going really well for her. But of course, you can't control everyone's behavior forever. So when things start going awry for her, you know, her fallback is, well, how do I manipulate this back into how I need it to be? So I do think that a lot of sociopaths actually do function that way, maybe not quite in the dark manner that Hannah does, but that do try to manipulate the people around them to make their life work the way they want it to work. So mm -hmm. that was a lot of fun to write, I have to say. Mm -hmm. And you must have done, I'm sure you did a lot of research for um, into like Hannah's mental state, right, for baby teeth, but you probably had to do a whole brand new set of research, because I'm sure it's different for children and for adults. What kind of research did you, did you, um, I mean, what kind of fun rabbit holes did you yeah, go down? I mean, some of it was um, an extension of the original baby teeth research of like, how do they try to instruct children, you know, in the mental health system if they have these empathy issues? You know, because you can't teach somebody to feel something, but you can teach them to maybe recognize what other people's emotions are. So I very much was following like, OK, that's what she would have learned. And she can sort of function as an adult having learned that. And then one of the primary books that I read, which was so interesting to me, was The Sociopath Next Door, which mm -hmm. is a non book, you know, about sort of the history of sociopathy and the study of it and how they function in different circumstances. And it was so interesting to me. So yeah, I just, it was kind of inspiring. Like, I don't know that I would have written Dear Hannah had I not read that book. Hmm. Okay. It is weird that they're, I mean, they really are just amongst us. <laughs> yeah. Walking, yeah, walking all around. Okay, so Hannah is married to Jacob, who has a teenage daughter, Joelle. How would you describe the dynamic between Hannah and her new family, I guess, at the beginning versus later? Well, don't yeah. the spoilers. Definitely with her husband, it's quite transactional, but it's quite transactional for both of them. I mean, they had a sort of rushed relationship. Jacob knew exactly how old Hannah was. They were 20, She was 20 years old when they met. And he had a 12 year old daughter at that time and still decided to marry her. This was very transactional because, you know, he needed a mother figure for his daughter. And never mind that Hannah was more like a big sister. Um, and yes, yeah, so they were and very much worked in, you know, this sort of tandem of how does this person make my life how what I want my life to be. And fortunately, for most of that time, you know, they did have enough in common and hobbies and things that they had a genuinely good relationship. Um, Hannah herself says, you know, that she probably wasn't in love. How can Hannah really be in love? Right. Um, but I think it was as good a relationship as it could be given how she functions in the world. And she mm -hmm. genuinely likes, I mean, again, it's, you can't use the word love for a sociopath, but she genuinely liked and likes her stepdaughter. And it's part of how she started becoming obsessed with her and sort of the way that when she was a child, she was obsessed with her father. Like that's how she loves is she becomes obsessed. So her stepdaughter sort of becomes the object of her obsession. Mm -hmm. 
It's not a good place to be. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. She also well, had this great relationship with her brother through, you know, an interesting format through letter writing. Why did you decide on that? It was such a, a great way to kind of convey their history as well as their affection for each other as well. Well, when I thought about Hannah past baby teeth, I thought it was very likely that Suzette and Alex would have another child. Mm -hmm. And I thought that, well, that dynamic could be really, really interesting to explore. You know, does, does Hannah love her little sibling or does Hannah hate her little, little sibling? Um, and then the decision to do it in letters, it was really so I could have Hannah's point of view in first person. Mm -hmm. I always write in third person past. And so it let me write directly from her brain mm -hmm. so that people could just tap right into her brain. Yeah. And she's very honest with her brother too. They like, they, they have a relationship where she can, she can express what right. she's feeling and her frustrations. And, and he's such a funny character in the sense that, yeah. he, you know, make her think about things a little bit. And, um, yeah, she feels safe with him, you know. Yeah. He's like the one person who you can kind of feel completely herself with. Yeah. Yeah, and I like the way we got, like you said, we got into her head. So we would see how her thoughts were very different than her behavior and how she was acting with her husband and uh, stepdaughter. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so this book actually seems to blur the lines between genres, right? It's a, a you know, a little bit domestic suspense because we have the marriage. It's a little bit um, psychological. It's a lot of psychological suspense, um, some disturbing and intense psychological suspense moments. Um, and even maybe even a little bit supernatural-ish. I don't know. What, what genre, which genre would you put it in? I would put it in psychological thriller, also psychological domestic suspense, yeah. whatever that sort of broader genre is. You know, I like to explore family dynamics. I find them really interesting. So I do write a lot of things that are kind of domestic based. But I also write extremely internal characters, which is how mm -hmm. all of my work ends up being very psychological, because I like that thought process of what they go through in finding solutions for their lives. So all of my books tend to be quite internal. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I always kind of mix up genres a little bit. I love those kind of books that you're like, what is this? Where does it, where is it shelved in the bookstore? And I just think it's uh, unique well, and fun. Internal thoughts of sociopaths and psychopaths are one of my favorite things too. Anyway, um, <laughs> speaking of genres, you write in others too, including children's. Tell us about Under Slumber Bumblebeast. <laughs> so for those of you who have read Baby Teeth, or for those of you who have read Dear Hannah, there are references to Hannah's favorite book as a child, which was called My Under Slumber Bumblebeast. And this was, um, it was originally based on a short story that I had written, and I needed to have something that Hannah's father could read to her in the first book. And so I, I drew on my own material, because obviously with copyright issues, I couldn't use somebody else's book. But I always wanted it to be a real book. I mean, from 2018, I wanted it to be a real book. And I couldn't like get anybody to take me seriously about, no, really, this is a book. It's, it's going to be a book. Um, but I finally did find somebody who was excited about it, as I am. Uh, so Bad Hand Books and publisher Doug Morano. And he managed to find this really amazing illustrator, J.E. Larson. And like J.E. Larson's vision for this, you know, I think Doug and I were originally thinking, okay, maybe if we could have one illustration per little chapter, that would be great. And J.E. Larson is doing like four illustrations for every chapter. So it's going to be a highly illustrated book. It's sort of a bit of an oddball in terms of categorizing for children because it's illustrated, but it's not for little, little kids. It's more for like that seven, eight, up to 10 or 11. Um, but our hope is that adults enjoy it, enjoy it too, especially adults who might have read Baby Teeth or Dear Hannah, um, and that adults could read it to younger kids. We yeah. think it's a really charming, quirky, weird book. So yeah, we're hoping that people find it that way too. That's so cool. Congratulations. 
questions. That's really, yeah. really a really great story. Yeah. So without without giving away any spoilers, but that ending, that ending. So did, did you know that was coming as you were writing? Did you plan that out or did that come more organically as you were writing? At the point when I start writing, I'm a pantser. I call myself a directional pantser um, because the thing that I know is the end. Like I do know what the end of my books are and I usually know something in the middle. So then I can write toward the middle and then write toward the end. So I did know at least the general idea for the end. So yes. Okay. I like that directional pantser. I like that too. Maybe I'm going to take that. <laughs> same direction. It sounds a lot more, um, I don't know, uh, normal than saying a pantser. Like it's, <laughs> uh, you, have, you have purposeful pantsing. Is right. I mean, I'm not just like a disorganized mess. I mean, I'm still slightly disorganized. Like I have little notes and scraps of paper. I mean, it is a mess, but it's I still know something about the story. I like that. I could even lie and say I know the ending, and then I would seem like a directional piece. I like that. Yeah, but then, but then your editor's going to ask you, so how does it end? <laughs> I would have to make up an ending to be directional fancy and then maybe change it. I don't know. Yeah, you're right. I've caught myself again. Okay. Yeah. Or write an outline. Kim yeah, Kimberly's a big outliner. Outline. Yeah, I can't do outlines. Ugh, I can't either. It sucks the life right out of my projects. I know. I know. Yeah. Huh. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm becoming a transformed pantser. I'm Ugh. delving into the, the realm of. She's going to the dark side. <laughs> yeah. But it worked for you, right, Heather? It, it it really has kept me on track, uh, like in a kind of a chaotic time in my life, like where I have had to step away from my project many times. But the outline brought me back to it in a much more effective way than I'm not like kind of waiting my waiting back in and like where the heck am I? So yeah, what what is happening in this book? Do, what have I, where have I been? And so that that has helped me quite a bit. So yeah. we'll see. Yeah. Still up in the air if it worked for me. <laughs> yeah. But I think I think we've also said it um earlier, but this book can be read as a standalone, right? For people yeah. who haven't read Baby T. I very much intended that um it could be read as the only thing that you read by me, or it could be read before or after baby teeth. So it's mm -hmm. it's like if you read Dear Hannah first, and then you might want to know what was she like as a child. And obviously, I've had a ton of people who read Dear Hannah, or read baby teeth as a child, and like, what happened? They wanted to know what she was like later. So yeah, that's part of why I have it placed so many years after the first book, mm -hmm. so that I could really write it as a standalone book. So yeah, you can read it by itself or with the other one if you want. Brilliant. I love it. Yeah. All right, you guys, it's the time for the killer giveaway. We have one copy of Dear Hannah to give away tonight to one lucky viewer in the U.S. or Canada. See, Canada, we got you this time. Doesn't matter if you're watching us on Facebook or Instagram or YouTube. We scour the comments everywhere we stream. But please make sure to tell us where you're from. The question tonight is, which sinister creatures does Zoe to share her Pittsburgh home with. I think they've made some appearances. <laughs> love it, love it. You know, there's one right here. So oh, it's yeah. not the camera. <laughs> yeah, and there's one like lifting up the shade behind you. <laughs> <laughs> that one is everywhere. It's <laughs> one on the bookshelf again, so cute. Well, the killers, we love our independent booksellers and we want to support them in any way we can. That's why we ask every author who joins us to tell us their favorite. And so Zoe has chosen Riverstone Books yes, in Pittsburgh, PA. So tell us why is this is the, the best bookstore in your opinion? Honestly, it was really hard to choose one because I love all of my local independent bookstores. Like there's Mystery Lovers and White Whale, like we've got great bookstores. But Riverstone, there is a Riverstone Books in my neighborhood. So I felt like I had to pick my neighborhood bookstore. And um, the Riverstone Books Squirrel Hill is also the official home for signed copies of my books. 
and they can ship anywhere in the U.S. So, so for those reasons, I was like, okay, I should pick Riverstone Books. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Perfect. Well, we'll be dropping that link to Dear Hannah in the comments so you can order it um, from from Riverstone and any other books of Zoya's that you'd like to. So that will be dropped in the comments for you. I just did that. So make sure to find it, to dig it back up and go get yourself some books. Um, obviously, the killers love to read and the Killer Author Club is the place to share the love for fabulous books. You can post pictures, write reviews, ask for recommendations, comment on other people's reviews, give yours. We love it when our TBR cups runneth over, which is why we want to ask Zoya, what are you currently reading? So I recently started, <gasps> I know everybody's reading this book yeah. and I'm like, okay, I have to have it because I want to read it too. So I just started this a few days ago. So good. Yeah. And beautifully written. Yes. Beautifully written. Yes, it is. So speaking of amazing reads, we have a couple more for your toppling TBR. First up is Killer Kara Ruda. Congrats to our very own Killer Kara on the release of the second Mrs. Strom. <laughs> this is the long-awaited follow-up to Kara's best day ever. Creepy Paul is back, y'all. Kara will be back as well next week as our killer guest to tell us all about this book and give away copies. So don't miss her episode on August 27th. And also check out My Daughter's Revenge by Natalie Simmons. When Jules sees a man's death reported on the news, she's horrified because that man was dating her daughter not long ago. Ooh. If her daughter has the same dark, obsessive streak as Jules does, then who knows what she might have done. Eek. I will be dropping the link to both of those books in the comments. Um, but Natalie is giving away three ebook copies, their ebooks, to lucky viewers. So I'm thinking that's probably anywhere in the world where you are. Right, so drop, just a comment. <laughs> drop a comment if you'd like to be entered for this book and good luck. All right, you guys, membership has its privileges. So if you're on Facebook, check out our private members only group called the Killer Author Clubhouse. And speaking of the clubhouse, as of Wednesday, August 21st, like tomorrow, the killers will be merging our two Facebook groups into one. We want to streamline all the killer fun into one spot. So our private group, the Killer Author Clubhouse, is now the one place where you can find all the killer magic. So that means that if you just are in our public group, Killer Author Club, you need to leap on over to the Killer Author Clubhouse, the private group. We'll drop a link in the comments to where you should be and just request to join. It's really easy. We'll let you right in and it's really nice in there. And besides all the fun in the group on every episode, we choose a member of the Killer Author Clubhouse to win a piece of swag, like t-shirts, hats, mugs, candles, toasts, all of that. So tonight's winner is Donna O'Neill. Thank you for being there, Donna. Please send one of us killers your address and we'll send some Killer Author swag your way. Right. And my goodness, I think it's that time of the evening. We are so uh, happy to tell you, Zoya, that you have survived <laughs> the club. So we will send you this lovely badge and you can print it out, hang it on your wall, with all your other lovely. This is our cat toy, I think. A cat toy, whatever you want to do. But um, congratulations and thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for having me. It was a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. And not scary at all, right? Not too scary. <laughs> <laughs> so that does it for tonight's episode, you guys. Thanks for, to everyone for tuning in. And thanks so much to Zoya for being here. Also, a big thank you to our friends at Book Reporter for sharing Killer Author Club news with their readers. For all your bookish news and reviews, check them out at bookreporter.com. As I mentioned earlier, we'll be back again next week on our usual Tuesday night, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 Pacific, with our very own Killer Kara Ruda. We'll be talking about and giving away copies of the second Mrs. Strom. 
And she, I want to hear how she manages to write so many books in such a short time. In the meantime, please find us wasting entirely too much time on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, all the socials for all the information you need, times, upcoming schedule, past episodes, recipes, and merch, surf to killer author club.com. Thanks for tuning in. That does it for tonight's show. Thank you for tuning in. If you'd like to catch our next show live, we are every other Tuesday night on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. For times, upcoming schedule, and to catch up on past episodes, visit us at killerauthorclub.com. Happy reading. Now get on out there and kill that TBR.